Evidently, my stomach is made of steel because laxatives don't work on me. Hey, y'all. Um, it's Gabby. Welcome to my channel. So today, I kind of wanted to go over six tips with you guys. Um, before I go over those tips, I did want to go over, I guess, update you on some of my, my boob journey. I'm over a year post-op right now. A lot of the videos that I'm posting are from when I got it done, like, in November 2018. I stopped making the videos because I didn't like how my boobs were settling and I just didn't want to kind of come off pessimistic or upset on the camera so I just just decided to just stop making videos and to see how things settle and then decide later on if I'll continue making videos now things have settled settled a little bit I am gonna get things corrected but um I thought I'll just make a video anyways because not every breast augmentation ends up perfect and so I feel like my story being different and requiring a little bit of correction will kind of be beneficial for you guys um so my stats right now is I'm currently a 34 double D um the implant type that I have is a moderate plus implant people don't usually know that I got my boobs done but if when I tell them they're like oh wow and my boobs feel very very soft I mean yeah my boobs feel very soft and I don't really have much I guess to complain about besides the fact that my left boob is 100 cc's bigger than my right boob and it's a little bit noticeable in that my left boob is kind of close to a double d and my right boob can kind of fall into a d as well depending on the bra so um my left boob he did make a deeper pocket for it because my left boob originally was smaller I had tubular breasts which is like a disorder where your boobs don't grow the fat in your boobs aren't don't grow regularly I guess it was kind of a cute in that um it didn't look that bad but i wanted my boobs to look good so i got them done obviously now to get on to the tips hmm. these things are things that i think they may have been mentioned um on some forums but i didn't really see videos about them i figured i'd let you know what worked for me helped me with my recovery things that i didn't realize um would happen that happened and how i kind of fixed them essentially okay so let's get started. first thing one of the things that i wish i would have done prior to my surgery is meal prep now the main reason why i'm saying that that's something that you should consider doing it's because after surgery that first day i was very groggy and i slept a lot the second day when i finally woke up and i was hungry i didn't really want to obviously go downstairs because i was living in a townhouse with my ex-fiance and i didn't want to go downstairs to get food i didn't really want to have to eat anything that was um gonna involve me working for it if that makes any sense or cooking or anything like that so i found myself eating pizza it's quick and easy and it's fast and i could just eat it and then go back to sleep and so the first few days after surgery, I found myself eating crappy food. And prior to that, I wish I would have meal prepped, even just putting aside some snacks for you to munch on. Like, I wish I would have had, like, some um, veggie dip snacks or something like that. Because I know with me, I actually genuinely like vegetables with, like, ranch dip and stuff. And so, had I had that option, I would have eaten it. My ex-fiance at the time, he was working quite a bit, and so he didn't really have the time to, like, go to the grocery store and get me the things that I wanted. So it was a lot easier for him to just kind of order me pizza or pick up some fast food. Um, we were eating kind of crappy then. I think that also contributed to me not necessarily feeling my best and gaining weight after my surgery. So if I or you um prior to your surgery out at least plan what you were what you're going to be eating if you're going to be recovering with a friend or with a significant other if they cook great but even then i would still plan like to have some snacks there for you to eat even some fruit bowls and stuff like that because those can come in pretty handy after surgery when you're not in the mood to really like make anything my dog is barking on top of that you know what i'm gonna just keep going yeah so when you're not in the mood to really cook anything or to kind of put effort into what you're gonna eat it just makes it so much easier i promise you okay and the second thing is so boob tape boob tape um or, or boob band depending depending on what you call it it's the band i'm gonna insert a picture somewhere um it's the band that you kind of place over your boobs to help them drop and fluff and um when i first got my boobs on i found it to be very uncomfortable because obviously for me i got my incision around my areola and that pressure of the 
breast implants kind of pushing against that incision it, it just made me feel uncomfortable so for the for a little bit I didn't like how it felt but what I found was that it was very effective in helping me sleep the boob tape it helped to keep my implants in place, like in the center. And so I'm a side sleeper usually or a stomach sleeper. Obviously, I can't sleep on my stomach right after breast surgery. So I found that when I would have the boob tape on at night, it would actually help keep my implants in the center. I had a body pillow, which would also help to keep me from being 100% on my side. I was kind of like leaning towards the side a little bit. Like, don't forget, it's under your muscle. So your muscle is trying to figure out what's going on and what that is and so i found that um when i would shift um without the boob tape my implants would shift and i could feel it and my left implant is bigger than my right so i could feel the strain of my left implant kind of pushing on this side if i ever laid on my right side and so it just felt really uncomfortable and i found that the boob tape kind of helped to keep everything anchored um like in place a little bit while i slept so i would suggest that um i know the boob tape feels uncomfortable but if you're having trouble sleeping that can kind of help you sleep as well to kind of keep everything in place and then of course the body pillow on the side um to kind of help to give your implant some support and keep it in place as well was also effective for me the next thing is make sure while you're signing up for your surgery and everything like that sizing and everything I know for me, my doctor had me sign a contract kind of going over the corrective surgery um, procedures and stuff like that or discussing it in the contract that was like on a tablet. I didn't even get a physical contract discussing that stuff. And so after my surgery, I actually ended up not being so happy with my results in the beginning. Like I knew as it was initially healing that I wasn't a, they weren't healing quite equally because one was bigger than the other. And I found that I could tell the difference because I'm kind of perfectionist and my boobs were not cheap. They were about 80 something hundred over 8,000. So I saw that the way they were healing and I didn't really like that. So I already started asking questions like I think a month in about what the corrective procedures were. What I would suggest is that you make sure that you go over all of that stuff in your contract um, just to ask all of the questions up front so you know if something goes wrong, if you're not happy with your results, if for some reason the doctor, let's say, makes a mistake. Let's say the doctor makes a mistake like you, um, they didn't necessarily make it them proportional or n nipples aren't aligning correctly and little things like that what their um corrective procedures are that's something that i would definitely um suggest you make sure that you're conscious of and you know because i wasn't really conscious and i didn't know and afterwards it was a cluster me kind of scrambling with my fiance to figure out what i didn't know essentially so yeah um and then the next few things the next three things are pretty much a little bit tmi number four tip that i have for you is so for me after taking the percocet if you watch my other videos um for one of the videos i went over the medication and how i'm taking it i didn't take the percocet as advised i actually took it less than advised because i didn't like how i felt on it i don't like to feel like that doped up so i didn't really like it so i would take half a percocet if i really absolutely needed to and that was in the first seven days i really took the percocet like half of one or so and i still ended up getting constipated I saw in forums i heard people saying that that was something they, they dealt with the constipation but I assumed that since I wasn't taking the Percocet necessarily as prescribed, that I wouldn't necessarily have that problem. I'm only taking half every so often. Why should, would I get constipated? Honey, I got constipated. I had to like give myself an enema and stuff because I refuse to tell my like fiance about it because I, I just feel weird. Like my fiance never even saw me use the bathroom. So to go from like me being engaged to somebody, him never even knowing if or when I use the bathroom into saying, hey, can you um do an enema for me? Like, what? No, I was not gonna do that. So I struggled on my own. Let's just say I was on the bathroom floor trying to, it was it was a cluster, but it got done. Um, like I refuse to tell anyone about that, ew. Mm, I don't wanna talk about it here, but it, it happened. So you should know. As a matter of fact, it was so bad, I took like a stool softener, I took laxatives. Evidently, my stomach is made of steel because laxatives don't work on me. I took everything from the front, nothing was happening, so I had to go through the back. Seriously, I'm sorry if there's too much TMI for you, but I'm just letting you know because I struggled. So, 
and I didn't even take it as prescribed. So if you're going to take the Percocets as prescribed, I would advise you prepare yourself for something like that. Alternatively, though, Arnica was a godsend for me. So I would definitely say if your doctor gives you Arnica, that's the best thing to me. The Arnica, I do think, definitely improved my... Um, the way I was healing, for sure, I, I can I, I genuinely feel like it helped. And I actually, when I stopped taking the Percocets, I still took the Arnica all the way through. The next thing I will say, something that I didn't know was a thing. And I even Googled it. I searched. I tried to figure out if I was the only one that dealt with this. So, But I got chest pimples. And I'm going to insert a few pictures of the pimples that I got on my, that I saw happening for some reason. Um, I don't know if it's because, you know, for the first few days you aren't allowed to shower um, because of the wound and everything. So I don't, at first I was like, maybe it's because I didn't shower. But even after I was showering, I still found that I still had pimples on my chest. The way that I was actually able to combat them was by using, um, it's this face wash. It's actually a, it's technically a, I guess a face wash. Yeah, it's actually from Trader Joe's. Um, it's a tea tree oil face it's a tea wash. tree oil face wash and it I use it on my face um, actually to help with acne I, since I whenever I use this or since I've been using this I really don't even I don't even get like period acne anymore when I started using that on my entire body or on my chest as well I actually found that it um, helped to get rid of all the chest acne that I was dealing with. I'd never had chest acne before. I don't, I'm don't. i not really an acne prone person. My skin is oily combination, but even in it being oily combination, it's like it just happens to get oily throughout the day. Like in my T-zone, I didn't really have to deal with acne that much as a kid. I only really dealt with like hormonal acne around my um, menstrual cycle. For me, that's kind of how I combated the chest acne that I got. And the face wash costs like six bucks at Trader Joe's. Number six, as far as the tip that I have for you, I wouldn't even say a tip. Number six is more so just to be something to be conscious of, and that's your nipple sensation. Um, for me specifically, I had my incisions around my areola. And so um, because I had my incisions around my areola, I'll make sure I input my stats um, down in the description bar. Um, I already knew that it would take a while for the sensation in my areola to actually come back and um now i'm about a year post and the sensation i can feel pressure i can't necessarily feel cold or hot like not, not consciously like my nipples can feel cold and hot because they get hard <laughs> on their own but consciously i can't necessarily feel it and around my areola where there's a, lot, a little bit more scar tissue still left I can't necessarily feel like if it's out or something like that so I have to be conscious of making sure I stay covered because I can't necessarily feel parts of my nipple seal. I actually had a complication with my surgery and that turns out my body rejects dissolvable stitches so I kind of had another complication with that. Um, because of that some of the stitching got a little bit infected. I dealt with it but I, I didn't know I had that problem I'd never gotten surgery before so there was no way for me to know but because of that it's I think it's gonna it's taking me personally a little bit longer to get feeling around my areolas but like I have a friend who got hers done she had her incision under her um, the flap under her boob and the only thing she dealt with is like the stretched out feeling on her areolas but she didn't really have to deal with all that much like sensation loss so um those are my tips um i know that everyone is pretty much different i just knew that for me those six things are kind of things that i wish somebody would have told me or would have mentioned to me um obviously we all know like for the last one for the nipple sensation they always tell you it's gonna take a while everyone's different i'm like a year and four months post and i still don't have all that all of my feeling back and if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that or um suggestions of what you found to be helpful for you or if these make any sense to you um if you got your boobs on before and you've realized that these that these are things that you dealt with um specifically the chest pimple thing because i kept looking online even on youtube for chest pimples but no one else had them so i didn't know if it was just me for the next video i want to go over my results for my lipo because i actually gained weight after lipo which is like not the point of lipo so I kind of want to talk to you guys about that because I don't know if other people have dealt with that. But I gained weight after lipo and then I had to lose it and I'm still losing the weight now. So let me know if these were helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, subscribe so you can kind of hear more about my surgery journey. And let me know what you guys think. And thanks for watching.